I always say that Dubai is like a startup. You know, it comes in when times are difficult, it knows where to go, where to, how to pivot, and then find new ways to grow and thrive again, and it keeps coming back. Dubai has its own vision, and the vision is always to be better than anybody else. They want to be first, they want to have the best. Try to go to a bad restaurant here in Dubai. It's practically impossible. We strive to be number one, and then we look at what we need to do and achieve to become number one, and we, we push for it. Dubai itself, which is the most famous city in the UAE, doesn't actually have oil and gas. Dubai survived or grew, um, thrived from uh, Jabal Ali ports and tourism and hospitality, basically. So I think it's in, the, um, in our genes. A lot of the people from Dubai and a lot of the, the families from Dubai are originally their, their fathers and grandfathers are fishermen and fishing and trading and pearl diving is, is in the blood. I come originally from Germany and you know in 2005 I came here to start something new. I saw this tremendous development of Dubai and I wanted to be part of it, to benefit from it. And if you look at Dubai now, what happened in the last 20, 25 years, it's an example which I've ne seen nowhere in the world, nowhere. I mean the vision of the Dubai family here is proven every day. If you talk e-government, look at this marina. This marina has 1,000 births, built within three, four years. You know, without any opposition, because the decision was made, build the marina and it's going to happen. And this is the success of Dubai. It takes someone to have great vision uh, to really execute what they have done here. I've been witnessing it already for 30 years now. So you can imagine that when I came here first, it was basically empty. And with the first building started to rise from the ground, and nobody could really see what, is, what this is going to result into. And if you look at it now, I think Dubai is the hotspot of the world at the moment. You know, they talk about having 200 nationalities in, in one location, and it's quite true. It's also a wonderful hub from which to locate yourself, because within one flight you can be to two-thirds of the world's population. So in 14 hours we're down in Melbourne, you know, I come back here seven hours to the UK, I can fly to LA, I can be in Shanghai. So actually from a, a business and leisure perspective, it's, it's a great location to, to base yourself from as an individual or as, as a family got to think that Dubai, the UAE, is still in its infancy. It's, it's kind of 50 years or so old. And so as a consequence, it's been able to learn from countries around the world. You know, what did they do right? What did they perhaps or could they have done better? Which means not only is doing business easy, but actually moving around is easy too. Uh, I think for us it's uh, really a momentous occasion uh, to come back after two year hiatus and you know in that two years a lot of ha has happened in, in Dubai in the UAE there's a, a great momentum and interest uh, in the great outdoors uh, there's a change in the, the, the consumers behavior as well of what they want to do in terms of uh, recreation pursuits and in that regard um, leisure boating has uh, taken off uh, and I think this is uh, where we struggle with in the last few years. We could not get the boat show going because there were just simply no yachts. This show many, many years was a, a sort of unique uh, occasion to be here for all the Middle East. So we had people from Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, and uh, they were visiting the show here in Dubai. But of course, uh, for us, for the Italian, it was a, a great occasion to, to show our uh, Made in Italy, our capability for all the Middle East. And actually, it's also a situation in between all to the Far East. So really a good show. This is by far the biggest super yacht boating hub in the region and definitely rivaling well our peer marinas in, in Europe and in USA as well. So for us, um, the infrastructure is great. I'm from Saudi Arabia, uh, but uh, Dubai is uh, second home. 
despite of what a lot of people might think, throughout the COVID past two years, the number of sales uh, of uh, new yachts have increased. There is a great demand. People found you know, the yachts and the boats uh, as a, the perfect getaway from uh, the COVID situation. So uh, it is a booming industry and we see this happening on the ground in the show. The uh, expectation level has risen. We just have delivered a yacht to this region uh, on a very high level, exterior, a uh, lot of attention to detail. So I think the expectation level goes up. I think there's a lot of collaboration meaning that investors are trying to look here to collaborate with uh, European shipyards, maybe create their own little shipyards out here. So it's evolving. For someone who's passionate about this, it's very important to keep up with the, uh, the newest trends. Now it's uh, focused a lot on optimization of space, optimization of the volume, newest technologies and navigation and stabilization and even propulsion. So all of these have evolved very quickly in the last few years the established brands will do well. Every, everybody is full. We're talking about slots in 2026. 20, so it's a good place to be for the shipyards at the moment. I think also the economic impact of the yachting industry will find foothold here in the region also with repair work, maintenance, uh, but also serving as a, as a destination. In 1982, there didn't really exist much of an infrastructure. Uh, this, you know, this region is not known for manufacturing. So therefore, there was a lot that had to be done in-house. P&O Marinas is Dubai's oldest marina, and we have a total of 600 berths, and we're one of Dubai's busiest marina. We accommodate the majority of the mega boats in Dubai, the mega yachts, the 80 meters and above. And our main objective is to turn Dubai into a yachting destination in the winter. So once the season is over in the summer, in the Med, we will provide a destination for European boats to come to Dubai to enjoy Dubai's coastline and enjoy everything that Dubai has to offer. Today what we're finding is that, and especially after COVID and the you know, logistics and supply chain issues, we're finding that um, we're taking on the responsibility of growing also suppliers in our region so that they also become certified, so they also level up so that they can provide us with some of the, um, shall we say, services or products on board, uh, especially when it comes to the manufacturing. With the infrastructure here, um, you know, blessed by Dubai Harbour, the panoramic views here, and of course a very supporting ecosystem and increasingly a very enabling environment as we work with the stakeholders. Um, I think this is where we are looking at, again, attracting more countries uh, into, into, into this event in terms of um, better boat builders or suppliers and also uh, visitors. Dubai is always uh, focused on attracting tourists bringing people together from all over the world. In terms of uh, extending visas to make visitation to Dubai easier and also to encourage tourists to stay here longer. We, we have uh, started to give investors, you know, five-year visa, 10-year visa for long stay. So a lot of this has encouraged um, the interest for investors to be based here. And uh, we've seen a big um, kind of a migration of family businesses and uh, investment firms moving into Dubai in the last two years. With that, it creates the demand for uh, lifestyle products. And as such, it helps to fuel the demand um, in the boating industry as well. The UAE has grown so much and we've been right there along with it. We've seen the market grow, we've seen changing trends, and uh, we've gone through ups and downs and we're really proud to be where we are today, where we are uh, currently the seventh ranked super yacht builder in the world. We're looking to become the fifth. The UAE is constantly future focused. And so we are looking at solar power, we are looking at alternative uh, uh, methods of propulsion, we're looking at all sorts of ways where we can have a more sustainable product as well as a lower footprint when it comes to the use of oil and gas. What we're looking at is, is, is the right type of growth. 
It's not growth for growth's sake. It's growth in the right areas, things that, that make sense for Dubai. And I think this, this, this boat show that we're at today is, is a perfect example of that. Here, you've got, you've got the sailboats with the rowing boats, the high end with perhaps a more affordable market entry models all combined together. And, and I think we see that across Dubai. So I think wonderful times ahead for Dubai and the UAE um, and the region generally. Our leadership has the foresight of how to manage and how to create destinations. The objective is the same. It's all spearheaded towards one destination, towards one goal, and we have to achieve it. So all the different entities you talk to, they all have the same objective. They want to get Dubai into a top tier destination from products and services that it has to offer. Dubai is always evolving. They, they say the wind only blows forward here. The maritime industry in Dubai is flourishing. We have a lot of marinas, and as the infrastructure gets developed more and more, the industry is going to grow even faster. We've just scratched the surface of what the industry will become. So going forward, I think we are looking to build on um, the strengths that we have. We're going to look at sustainability, which is a big um, component for, for us. Uh, UAE is going to be hosting a COP28 next year, so there's a great impetus and encouragement for all of us. The Govcraft family has worked really hard to be where we are, and we're really excited about moving into the future and what that's going to bring.